welcome to another episode of Offsides, uh, kicking off our NFL talk here for today. Uh, it is Super Bowl week. Pro Bowl is uh, now in the past. The focus is on the Super Bowl, Bengals, Rams. Uh, kind of a key factor for this game, at least one that I'll be definitely paying attention to, is the performance of each receiving core. Uh, dissecting both of these teams, which team are you giving the edge to in this position for this game? That's a good question because I see both of these receiving cores almost identical. Um, Stafford, Burrow, average – Stafford averages 28.7 yards per game. Burrow's 28.8 or 288 and Matthew Stafford's 287.4. So they're close right there. Um, As far as team stats, yards per game, Rams are just a little bit better with 372 to 361. Um, That 20 or 10 yard differential is in the passing game for the Rams. So I think the, the I think the receiving lead goes to the Rams, but also with the vulnerability of throwing it that much, you have way more turnovers. Um, that is going to be the factor, I believe, in this game. If if Matthew Stafford doesn't have any turnovers, I think the Rams go sailing and and win this one in a close game. If they do have a turnover, I see Cincinnati winning this one in a close game. Either way, I see it being really close. Um, but yeah, receiving core, I'm gonna give the, I'm gonna give a little bit of an edge to the Rams. Sounds good. I guess kind of a follow or like a, a follow up question to that. If you're, you know, we've talked about the kind of this like money is no object. You're starting your own NFL team next five years which receiving core would you build around if you get to keep them exactly as is right now at the performance that they're playing at and then would you also be getting van jefferson back for the rams then as well in that core yeah like like or excuse me robert woods when he gets back from healthy like came in there as well yeah i'd say the rams don't get me wrong, Jamar Chase is an unbelievable talent. Um, that team is is really good, but where that team really wins its game is how much it moves on the ground and its defense is where it really relies on to win because they know that their offense can score points. Same with the Rams. like They know that they can score points on offense is why they throw it so much. If you get stopped, can you run? will your run game and your defense bail you out? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely with you on that as well. I mean, a lot of times it's the oh, the youth they're already playing so well, but at the same time, um, I mean, there's there's been like the comparison all year of oh, Joey Burrow isn't gonna like falter at all going to Kansas City. He's played in louder stadiums in the SEC. Like the the like the the bright lights haven't been too much for him. But at the same time, this is like as bright as the lights get and the noise and the like pressure that they're, these guys might or may not have on them. I mean, some guys like don't have pressure at all because they, they're confident in what, what they're able to do. Some, sometimes you get to a big game like this, you see guys who have been a key factor for their whole career, this whole season that they – take a dive because they let the nerves get to them or the the stage is a little too big um which i mean for all these guys or a lot i should say all a lot of these guys um this is their first super bowl um on the Rams side they have more guys because they just had been there four or five years ago but uh yeah it's going to be interesting to see the youth and uh this is the first time being there what guys are leaned upon have been leaned upon all season that meet the expectation and the ones that kind of come up short with either miscues, turnovers, whatever it might be. Um, 
and obviously the Bengals side has more, again, more of that. None of these guys have ever, have ever been in the Super Bowl. Um, quick turnaround. Like they haven't built up a couple of years to where it's like, oh, they made the playoffs. Oh, they lost. Oh, they got a little farther in the playoffs. Oh, they lost. Where they're building that experience. Okay, we know what it takes to get back here. It's kind of a Cinderella story for them where if it ends with them holding the Lombardi trophy, awesome. If it doesn't, it's going to be interesting because again with the offseason coming up a lot of these guys are young proved themselves this year end of the contracts they want more money um who knows if they go elsewhere but the pressure wise i feel like cincinnati i feel like has no pressure in this situation rams are staying at home sleeping in their own beds playing in their own stadium that they play in they have a lot of vets on their team they brought in a whole bunch of guys Like, they locked and loaded to go win. Cincinnati, like you said, Cinderella's story, they've had zero expectations from the start of the year. Zero. Like, there was no – I don't think anybody was like, Cincinnati Bengals are going to win the – get to the Super Bowl, like, confidently um, before the season started just because there was no what to expect here with the pieces that they have. Joe Burrow with the full season, if he stays healthy, he has. I feel like all the pressure is on L.A. in this situation, and Cincinnati can go out there and just play without have, without having to put that extra pressure on them because, like you said, how young that team is. They've already gone into the number one seeds house on the road, one. Kansas City Chiefs, a lot of stadium in the NFL on the road, one after being down in a huge hole. Like, I feel like they have no fear. That's the word. That's the word I'm going to use. They have no fear of whatever they see. They know that the, how they can play, they can overcome anything that's in front of them. And, like, as far as pressure, I feel the most pressure on a person in this entire game is Matt Stafford. Does he finally get his trophy? You know, like Mm -hmm. everybody knows he's deserving of one, but he still hasn't won one. Um, If he doesn't get it this year, does he have another chance to get, you know, like it almost seems like the Rams team was perfectly built to get to this point as well. This is going to be a great, a great game. I feel like this is going to be one of the best Super Bowls we've seen in a while. Yeah. It's definitely an odd one. Again, Bengals Rams. I like, what 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 were the odds on that preseason of that being a Super Bowl matchup? Like far down the list compared to other matchups. Um, Bucks but, Pats was the top one. Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, I like you said, both like both teams deserve to be here. I agree that I'd like if there's one way that it's like okay, the pressure is one way or the other. I mean, like like look at last year though too, Bucks played on the road all postseason, and then they secure a home playoff or a home Super Bowl for the first time ever. Even and though they were in a win team, and now the Rams, because this will be the last Super Bowl record that will be set as far as teams playing in it, unless they're, like, getting there for the first time. Because mm-hmm. the Bucks last year, like you said, hosted the Super Bowl, but they were the away team. This year, Rams are hosting, and they're the home team. So that is the other record that falls here. So it is a little bit different as far as that even added pressure because they did play the NFC Championship game in L.A. That wasn't an easy one. Um, They struggled. They could have blown out San Francisco if they would have not turned the ball over. And I think that's what it's going to come down to is is Matthew Stafford, the one guy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know what you're going to get out of the rest of the team? You know what you're going to get out of the Bengals? They've been pretty steady the last – the whole playoffs and really the last couple of weeks going into the playoffs. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, it's going to come down to Stafford and if he can avoid turn – I mean, even in that game against San Francisco, he had only one pick, and that was what we talked about going into that game as well. If he has a pick, so long as it's not detrimental, it's not when they're backed up to where it's going to immediately turn into six or a field goal. It didn't. They threw a field goal, or he threw an interception. Defense got a stop, got them the ball back. 
So I think that that play that's that's going to be the exact same thing in this one. If the Bengals can directly turn a Matthew Stafford interception into points, then yeah, I could see like the Bengals edging out a, a close one. But yeah, if Stafford either has no turnovers or like against San Francisco, it doesn't turn into points on the other side. I mean, top to bottom, I would say the Rams are the better team. I mean, defensively as well. I know that my question was about the receiving core, but just defense top to bottom too. They have better talent as far as experience, uh, long time pro bowlers, like proven that like there's a lot, there's don't get me wrong. There's guys on that Bengal team that have had great for like first season, first couple seasons here coming in, but to have the longevity of Von Miller, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, some of these guys that have been able to do what they do year after year after year, it's hard not to give them the edge on that side of the ball. Yeah, Trey Hendrickson should be able to make it back. I know he's been out uh, for the Bengals all postseason. He should be back for their D-line for the Super Bowl. So that's a huge boost, as well as C.J. Uzama their tight end that also was injured against the Titans. He also is, looks like he's slated to play. So those are two huge impact guys that are also coming back for the Bengals that I feel like, I don't know. That's the thing about the Bengals. It's like on film, they use everybody. The Rams, they kind of Cooper cup kind of target OBJ a little bit in certain situations. Cincinnati, I feel like Joe is just whoever's open is open. I don't care. There's not one specific guy that I'm looking for in any situation. You're open, you're getting the ball. Yeah. And it seems like Stafford, like even watching him postseason ending of the year, when the pressure was dialed up, it's like he was always looking for Cooper Cup. Mm-hmm. So well, that'll same be thing. another thing to watch as well. Yeah, well, same thing for the Bengals, though, in that AFC Championship game. I remember when the Bengals were on the goal line, Burrow went to, to chase, like, three times in a row, and then they got a touchdown. So it's like – in well, situation one one, you take the chance. Yeah. The top guy, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it's going to be a great game. I mean, it's Tuesday. It was still, like, basically five days out yet, but – as we get closer and closer, kind of the, the media days here, the hype continues to build. We'll, we'll keep touching on it this week. Yeah, sounds good. And then um, I over to my question here for you. The Saints now hired Dennis Allen, their longtime defensive coordinator, who's done a tremendous job for the organization. That was my thought of who they were going to sign right away for their pick. I'm glad that I ended up being right and as well for the organization. I feel like he is the perfect fit to replace Sean Payton after working in lockstep with him basically for a long period of time. Um, With him now taking the reins as head coach, what do you see them doing with their quarterback situation? And how do you see them, I guess, major people that they let go sign or have to re re, um, sign, redo their contracts to get underneath their 71 million currently over the cap. Yeah. Their quarterback situation is definitely interesting because Jameis Winston, again, towards ACL mid season um, on a perfect pace, he's not going to be able to get back until that, I think week five, week six, Mark, whatever that was when he tore, when he tore it. Um, So you're going to need somebody to get the ball rolling to start the year, whether that's Taysom Hill, Trevor Simeon, um, they go after a guy maybe. And I know it was your last week or maybe off, off camera. We talked about this a couple of times. I think that Taysom, like they, they, they restructured Taysom Hill's deal. I mean, like, as cool as it is that they've been keeping him and kind of using him as, like, a Swiss Army knife kind of role, I think it's time to move on from him and go for a true quarterback. Um, I mean, anytime you have kind of that hybrid guy, it, it hasn't worked out for teams a whole lot. I mean, for instance, look at the Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson, kind of that running back, quarterback hybrid 
as far as how much he runs the ball. Yes, he has success, but when it comes to being a true passer of the football, it's not quite there. Interceptions, bad decision making, can't take a game over when he needs to, and like in short, short time situation, move the ball downfield through the air and get it done. Um, I mean, Kyler Murray, another guy, like the, 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 there's guys Patrick that Mahomes, Josh Allen that get well, those guys have shown success of like getting either to the Super Bowl or an AFC championship as far as like uh uh the Ravens like they've never they never got to an AFC championship with with uh Jackson the Saints have never like were unable to turn the season around and make it to the playoffs with Taysom Hill um in some cases like like you said, like Mahomes, Allen, guys who kind of lean on the run a little bit more than other quarterbacks do. There's some success with it. Again, with the right personnel, with the right coaching. I don't think that the Ravens, and then in this case, the Saints, are a team that are able to do that, especially now that you have a defensive head coach taking the reins. Um, Sean Payton's gone, arguably one of the best offensive minds to ever coach the game. You take him out of the equation. What happens to that offense now? Um, unless, unless he he plans on turning Hill into a true quarterback, like le- less designed runs, more like pocket passing, and try to develop him that way. Um, but otherwise, I, I think it'd be smart for them to move on from him. Honestly, even though they restructured his deal, see, it's more of like a. It, at first, it was voidable to where basically like. They could get rid of him and they wouldn't owe him any money. But if he stays, he earns more as time goes on. That's kind of how his contract is now. It's kind of a hybrid based on X amount of snaps he plays in certain positions. He makes more or less money kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I don't see it working out for them, keeping Taysom Hill. And I don't think Trevor Simeon either. His time in Denver, he didn't really do a whole lot. He comes to the Saints. He tries to – he keeps them somewhat afloat but it doesn't have that it factor to again get them get them to the postseason so what do they do with james winston i mean i think he i take him over the other two but again his eligibility is going to be a huge question mark well obviously we'll know more when we get closer to the season if some if he has some crazy recovery and he's good to go week one, or if it's going to be closer to that midway point of the season before he gets back. Um, like I'd say built like, uh, I don't know, I guess try to try to he's currently not under contract with them anymore. Oh, they only brought him in for this past year. Yeah. Or that was the end of his year, I should it say. It was the end of his it was the end of his other deal that he had, but it's a, it's technically an option. So if the Saints are outbid, they he, he walks. Yeah, but who's gonna go get a guy that has a torn ACL? But a guy who did he, he was at 14 touchdowns, three interceptions before he was horse collar tackled that did it. Yeah. The Saints were winning football team before that happened. Like he's a proven quarterback, he know he can throw touchdowns. Yeah, but what he like? That's the thing. You bring you go out and Giants, get, you like Carolina, like there's just teams that I feel like are pocket, gonna. So that Cam Newton, Daniel Jones starts the season. They're zero and four, zero and five, one and five. All I right. feel like even a Winston's shorter lease than that. I feel like a shorter like, especially for James's situation too. Well, that's what I'm saying. As far as James coming back, he's not going to be able to come back till week five, six on a perfect schedule as far as a full calendar year to where you, you tell him, all right, we picked up James Winston. He's el- he's going to be eligible week six. If we have a losing record at that point, he's stepping in, you're out kind of thing. Or he goes to a team where there's a young guy in there and he type of mentor type role. Yeah. Like Houston, Miami. Yeah, I don't know. I just think that he's a good quarterback, and if the Saints don't pay good money to keep him, I feel like we're gonna see him on another team. Denver, like 
I feel like we're going to see him on a different team playing quarterback this next year as a QB one. Yeah. Yeah. And then as far as like the cap is like, I mean, to some of the notable people here, just Traquan Smith, wide receiver, Quan Alexander, linebacker. They have Ty Montgomery, Jeff Heath, their safety, Jalen Holmes, defensive tackle, Dwayne Washington, running back. Then they also have Juwan Johnson, wide receiver, Ethan Greenridge, tackle, Jalen Dalton, defensive end, Deontay Hardy, another wide receiver, Carl Granderson, defensive end. These are all people who are set to make a good penny next year that all aren't going to be able to. I mean, there's only really three or four names on that list. The first three or four you mentioned. Um, Callaway, Alexander. Uh, they're all going to be free agents. Yeah, I think those are guys you keep. After that, I mean, again, none of those none of those other guys have seem like like they they don't stick out to me as oh that they got to keep that guy he's phenomenal to where they let them go free up some cap or um. They keep them for cheap deals to say, all right, we'll keep you, but you got to prove yourself kind of thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it seems like every, like as much, as much as like on paper cap is an issue, it seems like every off season, all oh, this team's fucked. They're this much over the cap. And then they come into the, the next season completely fine. So it's, it seems like less of a worry because they have these guys that know how to, Figure it out. Push it into the future. Get rid yeah, of. Yeah, but seventy-one million is so much to push on. I don't like Tampa. The is that situation... the most? Is that the most? That yeah, the that's most... the most ever in the history of over the cap at this point. Tampa, when they redid their salary cap gymnastics and kept everybody, they were only like eighteen million over. So this is just like six times that amount. Yeah. <laughs> cause they cause they do have to re-sign Marcus Williams or safety, arguably one of their best defensive players. They need to re-sign him. They're not gonna let him walk. And Teron Armstead, who's their offensive tackle, who's been there fucking the Drew Brees protector. Like he's been there since 13. Um yeah, like that's another guy who's gonna take a good chunk of money to keep. And PJ Williams, also their top corner. Another guy that they should probably keep. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're this is whole situation is going to be very interesting to see what they do because if they can somehow make this work, like you said, seventy one million, then there should be no worry ever in the history of salary yeah. cap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you find a way to hide, to cover up seventy one million dollars and keeping a lot of your guys, that's ins- that guy should do everybody's taxes or yeah. everybody's whatever. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, yeah, like you like those those free agents you mentioned. There's only a couple that are seem worth keeping. Obviously, I'm not a Saints like a huge Saints fan. I don't watch every single game, so I mean. People are watching this might be like, oh, but this guy's good. This guy's good. What are you talking about? I mean, there might be a couple of guys that are like worth keeping as well. But as far as household names that I've seen on the highlight reels make a difference in the games I have watched, um, yeah, there's only a couple on that list that stick out to me. But yeah, one thing we forgot to even mention, Alvin Kamara's issue with the battery thing. Does, oh, he get yeah. a susp- does he get a suspension from the NFL and have to miss games? Michael Thomas, does he come back? Does he play? Yeah. Or, like, even – I mean, obviously, like, you don't want to release the guy because he's one of the best running backs, but there's so many times where, like, a player has, like, a DUI, assault charge, battery, whatever it might be, and the team releases them, then like, shortly after. So it, it's like, does he fall into that bucket of they don't want to deal with – they don't want to deal with the, the legal issues of keeping him – and him not being eligible for however long to start the season that they let him walk. And then he's arguably the, the aside from like Rogers and Russell Wilson, the next most valuable guy in free agency this year. Yeah. I don't see that they let him go. I feel like this is 
obviously this isn't the same situation as like the Ray Rice thing because that was like caught on video and all that stuff. But like how good he was to the team at the time, they didn't want to get rid of him. They didn't want to cut him right away. They made they waited the last second till the NFL came in and said, "Okay, dude, like you're not going to be able to." I feel like this is going to be the same type of situation here in New Orleans. Unless the NFL comes out and gives a suspension, a fine, or whatever, nothing's going to happen because he is the focal point of that team. Mm-hmm. And if he got into a fight with in a bar with some drunk asshole, props to him. Mm-hmm. At least somebody hit somebody all fucking Pro Bowl weekend. Yeah, no kidding. I feel like it helps him too because it is now the off season to where the NFL might be like, all right, you have to go to a couple classes on a couple Saturdays to kind of. Well, I think that's the least of the NFL's worries at this point with all the heat that they're facing as far as owners paying for losses, yeah. fucking teams cheating, fucking. Yeah, the whole forest thing <laughs> still going on. Yeah. There's a lot the NFL has to deal with right now. Yeah. Yeah. I did see a meme though. Um, the Raiders could have almost their a full seven on seven NFL squad from the players that are currently there or got arrested in Vegas during the year this year. <laughs> There's five. That's hilarious. <laughs> so it was like the Las Ve- or it was like uh, Vegas's correctional football team. <laughs> Uh, Sebi Arnett, R- Ruggs, Camara, Camara, and I forgot the two other people on there. They're either I think they're still in in like jail there from previous years or whatever. They weren't people that just like this last year. Oh, at least that we know about. Yeah, they call it Sin City for a reason. <laughs> that concludes today's NFL segment. Be sure to come back tomorrow for more NHL news and highlights. <laughs>